All right. Well, let's bring up, let's get right into it. Let's bring up my first guest. She's a talented comedian. Uh, she's a, a, a composer and a songwriter, and she's uh, the founder. She recently, uh, she got married on a unicorn, so she has the power to summon things from the magic realm into our realm. That's power, ladies and gentlemen. Think about it. And, uh, but she's the founder, uh, one of the co-founders of the New York Funny uh, Song Festival. So we're pleased she's here. Jessica Delfino, please welcome her to this Goodness, uh, how are you? I'm fine. Good. Thank Gra you for grab the me microphone here. there, yes, and uh, that's right. make sure they can hear you up on the balcony. Hey. Hello up there. Hello. <laughs> Hello, everyone out there. Oh, Jessica, how you doing? You just uh, you just wrapped up another New York Funny Song Fest. We did. It was our third big year. Third big year. Third big one. And how did it go? It was good. It was. There was a lot of people playing all kinds of instruments. And, and being uh, funny with the instruments at the same time. You like that in a funny I, song festival. I like a funny song. Probably the I two do. ingredients you need. They go well together. <laughs> two very important things. Where is that hell? Funny song. Uh, well, we had it in three different boroughs this year. It was in Queens at the uh, Creek in the Cave. Sure. And at Union Hall in Brooklyn. Great. And right here in Manhattan, downtown, at uh, some place. <laughs> well, uh, we don't mm -hmm. need to remember everything no. about our lives. I can't. But now, uh, you, you uh, and, and is it a growing field? Did you feel like you had some new, what were the standouts this well, year? Well, let's see. We had uh, a group that I really liked a lot were, uh, I can't remember their name. Um, <laughs> they were terrific, though. Uh, you generally have memory problems? I do, yes, yeah. I do. And I'm not even stoned or anything. I well, just can't remember anything anymore. It happens to us, doesn't it? I try not to remember anything, if I can help it. <laughs> I try to just, yeah. Well, that'll serve you well yes. tonight. Yeah, no, there were just... <laughs> uh, believe me, many guests have wished for that power. Oh, gee. Oh, they were called the, the Dream Stocks. That's what they were called. The, the Dream, dream yeah, Songs? The Dream Stocks. They're dream Stocks. They're a, a guy and a girl, um, and they sing songs of... Um, they're like a motivational duo who go to schools and sing really funny songs. And, of course, all their songs are sort of, you know, sad about how none of their dreams have come true and things like that. That is one of the tough things about dreams, isn't it? I know. They're really heartbreakers, dreams. Yeah, they are. And yeah, who needs them? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, and do you participate in the festival as well? I do. I, I have a, a show that I like to put on. Yeah. For me, it's called The Night of Dirty Songs, and it's a, uh -oh. just a whole bunch of dirty songs in one in night. little blue. Yep. Uh, one night, not two, just a night of dirty songs. Two nights of dirty songs would be way too many. You'd have uh, to get a shower uh, afterwards. Uh, totally. But, yeah. but one night of dirty songs is exactly enough. Just and, right. Yeah, and it was, it's a, it was really fun this year. And then 50 Funny Songs is a show that we do every year, where 50 performers each perform a song. So that's a really big, crazy show. It's one of our. our they have to be original songs. They can be covers if you deliver them in a funny way. I had a gentleman who was going to do "Fly Me to the Moon." Yeah. By uh, what's it? Sinatra? Is that? That's the one. Yeah, that guy. <laughs> that that egg. And um, so, he, but he he actually ended up having to drop out at the last minute, sadly. Well, that's he sad. Was. But maybe he'll be back at a no, future. No, probably day. not. Now, did you grow up? Did you always have an affinity for this kind of thing? Did you grow up singing in a funny church or something? <laughs> uh, my mom is a musician, and I, everyone in my family plays different instruments. And when I was about ten years old. Old, I started a band with a couple of my friends called the Flabbergasted Cows. Flabbergasted Cows? <laughs> yep. And we played songs <laughs> on Casio keyboard, and you know, some of our big hits were Party in the Bathroom That's and a good one. Uh, Dingleberry Trail. Uh oh. Some of you guys might remember. <laughs> I don't Probably remember not. it. Probably not. But I can imagine it. Well, yeah. <laughs> it, it lives within. We did. Lives we recorded it on cassette tape, and I still have the cassette tape. Oh, really? You ever released that? No, I, I know. No. No, it's buried somewhere. And uh, uh, probably okay for Dingleberries <laughs> to remain buried. But uh, now, you, you, uh, uh, were you a fan of like Weird Al or that kind of I, thing? I am a fan of Weird Al, and he just put out a new album. I, last year, I got the honor of being able to perform with him in his show, which was a lot of fun. That's terrific. And he assigned my ukulele. 
Wow. Yeah, so that was pretty special. That's he, like the highest honor. It is. He, people think, um, it's funny, my dad um, thinks that he looks like Weird Al, and he thinks that other people think that he looks like Weird Al, but he doesn't look like Weird Al. <laughs> and he came to the show, and he was like, Jess, everyone thinks I look like Weird Al. He's like, I was walking across the parking lot, and some guy was like, hey, you're Weird Al. And I still don't know if that story was made up or not, but <laughs> I think it was not. Real. Sometimes when people get older, you have to humor them, don't you? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if he wants to look like Weird Al, my gosh, go I ahead. I totally egg him on. I'm like, yeah, Dad, you're you gotta exactly... got to support him in it. You look just like Weird Al. And you also, uh, Dr. Demento is another one, of course, a great radio host of kind of oddball, unusual yeah, songs. Yeah, he's really a neat guy. And yeah. he, I met him for the first time in L.A. this past... Uh, I think it was in March because I went there to film a little segment for the Dr. Demento documentary. It's oh, a mouthful. Try saying that three <laughs> times fast. A, a docu Demento. Doctor, yeah, <laughs> docu Doctor Demento. I have fun with words all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. Uh, but he Sometimes was, just on the subway, I'll just be talking just and making up words. Stuff. I will. A lot of people do that on the subway. It's kind I'm of a common of thing that you can I see am. people doing. You have to yeah. be careful. You do. People I misinterpret. Know. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it was really, that was terribly exciting for you. It was terribly exciting, that. and he um, it was it was sad because we were supposed to meet, and then he called me and he said he got food poisoning, so he couldn't meet, and I was very bummed out. But then he called me the next day and he said, I think my food poisoning is clearing up, and if you want, you can come and pick me up, and we can still go have lunch. So he was staying about an hour outside of. LA, but that yeah. was no problem because I'd rented a Dodge Challenger and I was super excited to drive it. <laughs> what so what I company were you using? Uh, Avis. Oh, they try a little harder, don't they? So I drove, <laughs> <laughs> I zipped out to, uh, to Long Beach and I, I picked him up and I asked him where he wanted to go and he was really set on going to Panera. So uh, <laughs> I took Dr. Demento to Panera had and we never had been? soup. Oh my goodness, we had a, I had a cookie. <laughs> It was a really um, wild it was time. Pretty, you know, I've, I'm familiar with Panera because my grandmother is also a big fan. Yeah. So. Um, and what do you remember your number? You had a little thing that you had. To... I'll never forget. Yeah. <laughs> it was uh, it was a really nice time though, and we talked. We, he gossiped about you know not too much, but told me a little bit about you know different performers over the years that he had met, and you know, some that he had discovered. Such a, he said you know Weird Al was kind of a guy that. You know, sure. I think he was one of the first people to play his music and things like that. And is his show still going? It's online now, so sure. it's, it's not on the radio anymore. I'm but familiar. Yeah, yeah, on the internet, some of you kids out there may be familiar with the yep. dialing internet. it up. Yeah. Well, that's great. And then you uh, you were you grew up. You spent some time up in Maine. I did. I grew up in Damariscotta, small town. Sure. There. What? Come on, really? You know Damariscotta? We have some, some real Damariscotta that's, fans. There's usually only one person a year who is familiar, and that that's you. You won the Damariscotta lottery that's terrific. tonight. Uh, I uh, was just up there last last summer, actually. Really in Damariscotta? Well, driving through. There's not a whole lot up there in Damariscotta, is there? No. No, no. but they have a terrific. Uh, not so much. Uh, uh, driving through. I did a show at the VFW Hall. Oh, no right kidding. There. Okay. And my goodness, what a great, great time they had. They, there was, I mean, they, they say that it's the greatest generation mm -hmm. between you and me, not the greatest mm -hmm. audience. <laughs> <laughs> a little trouble staying Very, away. Uh, but uh, we had a nice, uh, yeah. had a nice early supper. And, yeah, yep. yeah. They go was, to bed early up there. They do. Yeah. <laughs> It's very, uh, not, not really much to do, and all the stores close at about 7.30 anyway, so. So do you have a kind of rebellious youth up there? Uh, not too rebellious, a little a little bit. Hey, you know, I, I, I snuck out at night a couple times. And there we go. Things of that nature, but there, there wasn't really anything to do, so there was also no trouble to be had. Get to a blueberry festival or something. Yeah, you're gonna like break out and go steal someone's lobsters out of their traps or you know something <laughs> like that. But wild stuff. Craziness. Now you've got an you've got an album coming out. Is that right? I have an album coming out on Saturday. It's called Songs to Make War to. Yeah, that seems appropriate. So, pretty excited about Songs that. Songs to Make War to, mm -hmm. and. Uh, <laughs> That's great. You've got a, a release party coming up. It's on Saturday. And I noticed in a lot of your songs that the inspiration seems to be, uh, uh, you've got one that's about rape whistles, one about Jewish fellas, one about uh, uh, gentrification. So I imagine you're taking the L train a lot. Is that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's I, I actually live in Manhattan. Oh. I, I kind of avoid the L train, although I am married to a nice Jewish man. 
So there's something there. Yeah, yeah. He, he congratulations. Thank by you. The way. I, as you mentioned, we we got married on a unicorn. We on met unicorn. well. We met on Craigslist, which was a a lot of fun. Um, I highly recommend it. If oh, anyone, it out. anyone out there, OK Cupid is for the birds. <laughs> Craigslist all the way. Uh, Tinder, psh, nope. Shaw. Nope. Swipe left. Yeah. Yep. Well, I don't know. I don't yes. know how it works. No, I don't yeah. know how it works. Swipe the whole program left. All I know is I have to somehow pose with a tiger to make that thing work. But, but it was really, uh, it was really great. We met. Uh, we have a joke where he said he was looking for a couch, and I say, and he found one. Hey. <laughs> Thank you. A couch. He was looking for a couch. Yeah. And he found, and he found one. And he found one. I got it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we've been married now for a year. Congrats. That's great. Stuff. That's wonderful. And no, no, no need to, you know, hold your applause. Uh, no, no, too we'll late. See how it goes. Let's, let's see, see how, how it goes. goes. Exactly. We all know not, these things. Let's can not come get to too excited. Yeah, Only 50% quickly. of the audience should clap, right? <laughs> yeah, it is. Well, we'll see. So uh, now, do you want? To, do you, I see you brought an is, an instrument with you. Yep. Just I'm not that familiar with instruments, but I'm going to guess that's a, a, a Geitler Underfin 5000. <laughs> is it? It's a vintage parlor guitar. I was close. Yeah, so close. So now, do you can you can you do you want to do a song for the new album? I would love to do a new song. Okay, let's do that. Uh, do you need a, a music stand? No, you know I think I think can you We're guys okay. hear me out there? We're okay. okay? All right. Very quiet audience tonight. Very pensive. They're listening to every word. They're listening word. intensely. It's good for the recording. Okay, so this song is based on a true story, and it goes like this. One, two, here we go. I have a bicycle, I ride it around. There's no stopping me or slowing me down. It's my bicycle. Whoops. Cuts out your membership and keeps me in shape. Plus, it greatly reduces my chances of rape. Who ever heard of rape? find it at jessicadelfino.com. I'm having a CD release party on Saturday at 3 p.m. and $10 includes a show ticket, lunch, and a CD. Come on. Pretty good. How about that? How about that? Jessica Delfino. Thank you. Thanks for being Thank here. You.